public keys are not as safe as they say. Have I got a story to tell you? One day the queen, shall we say, asked me. Are you smarter than Terence Tell? What do you think? He's a genius. There are levels of genius. Could you crack a 44-digit public key? Are you kidding? Your genius doesn't know the sequence of the primes. I do. Show me how to crack a 44-digit public key. The rewards will be many. Honey, it's a hunt. So try to keep up with me. Pollard cracked a 44 in 47 hours with a P2012. But I could crack the 44 a lot faster. Let's look at Pollard's success story. Pollard had this massive 44-digit public key. It had a smaller prime factor of 12 digits and the larger prime factor was 32 digits. The big cat in the middle is me. The deer is my dinner. That's how I hunt. My lunch is always going to be the smaller prime factor in the public key. Pollard's SPF was this big number. So I asked myself, where is my lunch very likely to be? First, honey, I scatter the herd. My 44-digit dinner is going to be in group number 2, from 12 to 22 digits. Why divide the 44 into 4? Why 4 groups? Because I need the magic of prime spin. Terence Tao doesn't know how to use prime spin. If you understand prime spin, you can easily situate any large prime in the proper vector for computer simple calculations. You see, prime spin focuses on the composite creation primes exhibit when they travel down the number line creating composites. In mod 12, 7 spins clockwise, from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock to 11 o'clock. Prime spin is used to create a prime expansion gap which will be added to an initial value, over and over, until we reach or exceed the public key. Your buddy Terence Tao failed to discover the sequence of the primes. I did. For real? What a surprise. Tao doesn't know? The prime expansion gap enables number theorists to quickly factor public keys. The hunt begins with clock math. Clock math? No way. My system works if you know clock math. Even a computer will tell you. Error stupid. Use modular arithmetic. Yes, clock math, but with a twist. If you don't know prime spin, you could drown in clock math and never crack a public key. Tao doesn't know that prime spin down the number line. It's this spin that enables us to predict primes with much simpler equations. Look babe. Complex calculations are not my thing. Do simple calculations over and over again. Computers love to do simple iterations. Problem is, your mental thinks primes are random. They're not. We don't understand the sequence of primes all that well. Here's the sequence of primes, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. Uh, I mean, well, it's increasing, but other than that, they behave in, in a very sort of random manner, much more random than other sequences. I made the assumption that all numbers would be prime if primes did not combine to create composites, my love. It was then that I discovered the sequence of the primes. The primes, they are not random. The key creator is not going to use a very small prime factor because I am the king of keys, a Sherlock Holmes of hunting. I'll track down a 3, and it's all over for the public key. Even if the public key is this large number, a 3 divides into it in a flash. Bottom line? The king knows how to hunt. I'll munch on a 12-digit lunch before I devour my 44-digit dinner. My 44-digit dinner begins with a group 2 lunch, from 12 to 22 digits. The public key is out there and I locate its vector with clock math, and devour it with the prime expansion gap. What's so special about this prime expansion gap? I find the prime expansion gap so I can add it to the smaller prime factor to get to the public key. I will readily admit, it takes a little luck. I look in my book of primes. You choose a prime that becomes your smaller prime factor. Keep adding the prime expansion gap till you reach or exceed the public key. Stop. You'd be bones before you ever cracked a decent public key. It's a lot easier than doing this. Look, honey. I can teach you with a simple program. Small children can understand the concept. You start with an initial value, a potential smaller prime factor. You calculate the prime expansion gap, your add value. The limit is the public key. You use a while loop until you reach or exceed the public key. When using a while loop, we don't know how many times we need to add the prime expansion gap. So we execute up to the public key or just beyond it. If our result goes beyond the public key, we try another potential smaller prime factor. Forget the children, teach me how to crack a 44. Dearest dear, you asked for my help. So don't interrupt. 
The Pollard public key is in vector 1, that's the spoken clock math. So, your potential smaller prime factor must be situated in vector 1. Your smaller prime factor choice must be relocated to the same vector as the public key, if it isn't already in the public key vector. Darling, how do you calculate the initial smaller prime factor? You use this chart to relocate your chosen smaller prime factor into the same vector where the public key is situated. You need to keep in mind that the prime expansion gap is the add value that finally reaches the public key. Checkmate. As you can see here, the prime expansion gap works in mod 12. You multiply whatever prime you have by 12 to create the prime expansion gap for that prime. What if your guesses are horrible? I run a simple YL loop over and over till I hit the key. So now you know, public keys are not safe. But darling, I wanna see numbers. Sure. No problem. Honey, I'm the Sherlock Holmes of hunting. The public key starts with 22. So, some version of 4 and 5 will get me there. I flip through my book of primes, and choose a 12 digit. Sweetheart, try to keep up with me. The lucky train did not stop at my first guess. I created the proper prime expansion gap, which became the add value. In a flash, I discovered the product was less than the public key. The next adjustment was more than the public key. So back to my book of primes. What about Pollard's public key? We're jumping to dinner I take it. Pollard's initial value was 4927299913333. I used it to create the proper prime expansion gap, which was my add value. In a flash, I reached the public key. It was a perfect match, as you can plainly see. Because I know you like Hollywood endings, dear, I turned you into a deer, and learned to become a vegan.